All right, what's going on, everybody? Hopefully, you guys are having a great day today. So today we are here in the west side of the Las Vegas Valley. We are up here in a mass plane community called Summerlin. Now, the community that we are in is a guard-gated community, which is a country club, Red Rock Country Club. So this home that we are going to be touring today is at the end of a cul-de-sac. So at this cul-de-sac, there's only two homes. This is a bank-owned property. Now, let me show you here. We got this end home here. We got a couple of rehabbers that just bought this home. They're about to uh, finish up on this rehab here. This one right here is a bank-owned property, a courtesy of Simply Vegas. This one is listed at one million three hundred thousand. It is three thousand eight hundred twenty-three square feet. We're asking three hundred forty dollars a square foot. It was built in two thousand and four. Has a total of four bedrooms and five baths. So let's go and take a look and see what this bank owned has to offer. So the question uh, when we used to have a, a long time ago when our market in 2012 when we had a bunch of bank owned properties we had about 18,000 properties in the market I would say probably about almost 90% of them were bank owned so this is how it works uh, sometimes people call me up and hey you have a foreclosure now what is a bank owned proper, uh, property what is the procedure so this is how it works when somebody goes into default right? Next thing you know it, they end up getting foreclosed on. So the bank is sending out a notice, hey, we're going to foreclose on your home if you don't make up the back payments. Normally what happens from there, they will hire a realtor to do a short sale. Some people won't do a short sale because they just don't feel like doing it or they have the pride or they just want to play the game and stay in the home as long as they can and play the game. Then what happens is property goes back up in auction now it's conveyed to the world anybody can bid on it however the bank has to has the bank will have a reserve on it if investors don't meet it at the auction block then it goes back to the bank now it becomes an REO which is an REO stands for real estate owned now the bank owns the property and normally what they'll do is hire an agency or real estate company like us to sell the property on their behalf. Now it just becomes a traditional sale. Now it takes about 35 days to close, but however, you're buying the property as is where is condition. Now let's get right into it. So it looks like we have some lime, lime trees here, which is really nice. You have some terracotta pavers. And coming into the front door here, we have some diamond cut travertine, 18 by 18. However, as you can see, you know, it has the grout lines has not been sealed so it is so dirty now keep in mind this is a bank owned property so there's gonna be some work that needs to be done but I would like to know is would you purchase this home so this would be your formal dining area I love how you can put some pictures right there okay you got the Bull nose granite that kind of curves all the way around. We have 10 foot ceilings, okay? Also you have some French doors here that opens out into the courtyard. I mean, this, this home is gonna cost you some money to rehab it the, the right way. Because it is 30, what I say, like 3,800 square foot, just the flooring alone, if you're gonna do the flooring here, is gonna cost you a pretty penny. I mean, you're probably gonna run almost $40,000 on the flooring if you choose to rip all this out. However, if I bought this, I would not rip this out. I would resurface it, clean it out as well. So that way you can save the cost. A couple things has to be upgraded and modernized. Here's your island. You got your cook countertop. Look at this old school backsplash all the way to the top. 
Now you have some 42 upper cabinets with a five inch crown. However, um, I probably what I would do is keep the cabinets, get rid of the countertops, okay? Probably do quartz, change all the appliances out, change out all the fixtures, change out the backsplash. I'd probably paint the island maybe a gray, right? Do a different color quartz and paint the cabinets white. Here's your double oven. I would change out all the appliances here. And I would do definitely do a built-in refrigerator here. All the doors, I would customize and change out all the doors because all the doors are just standard and stock, gold fixtures. I'm just kind of showing you things, you know, some ideas on what you can do or let me know what you would do. I would take this out and make this more straight. I would have to change out all the can lighting, the old school. Definitely keep the uh, tray ceilings, plantation shutters. I would definitely keep that. Okay. I would stack stone that fireplace all the way to the top. Or you know what, I'd probably change John Allen out to a more slimmer fireplace. I would do a 48 inch fireplace, make it streamlined, cut that out, make it straight. Here's like your family room. Kind of give you a different perspective. Let me know in the comments below what you would do. The bar, I would take out this, um, this fin here. Make this all straight, change out the countertops. Change out the sink. And it had, definitely has potential. Do all new rocker switch. In addition to that, I would paint uh, the home. Let's come back here. Uh, let's see where we're going. Oh yeah, gotta go back through here. Down this hallway, we have the uh, garage here. Definitely uh, paint that. Change out the doors here. Here's your smart box. Now in 2004, that was big time. A little dark in here, so I do apologize. I mean, I see potential in this home. I mean, the first thing I would do is, if you're gonna flip this property, the first thing you're gonna have to do is find out after the repair value. So, what that means is, after you repair the home, what is the value of the home? So, before we make an offer, I would see what is for sale in this neighborhood, what are the current comps, what is the average days in the market, right based upon the average days in the market who is selling their home right that's definitely gonna have to be a uh, replace here you can tell it was leaking but you can build that box for very cheap once you figure out who your competitors are see the style of their home all right let's just say you know the average days in the market is 28 days whatever it is See who your competitors are. Now you have a general idea of price per square foot. Now that kind of gives you a baseline of how to design your home, right? And what your cost is gonna be. But you're gonna have a budget, okay? Some investors may want a 10% return. Some may want a 15% return. So let's just say the asking price on here is 1.3 but the comps in this neighborhood for a completely rehabbed property is you know 1.4 but for me to get it up and running the correct way it's gonna cost me a hundred thousand dollars so basically I didn't make anything now if you're just a person that just wants to buy in this neighborhood and you have the money and you want to come in and just gut it out and you know customize it to your liking because this is your last home, then at that point, this makes sense. 
So you know if comps, right, are you know 1.3 million, and you want to make a 10 percent, that means you're going to have to take a look at all your costs, see what your rehabs are, then submit your offer below um, the cost to build, and also keep in mind if you're flipping the property, you have. Uh, insurance that you have to carry. You've got carrying costs too as well, especially if you're financing. You have to calculate that. You have to see what your uh, taxes are. you got closing costs, realtor fees. So again, you're, you're going to have to make sure you have all the numbers correctly. So if the comps were here about you know 1.3, then you'd probably offer $950,000. Right? Because you're gonna to wanna to put in maybe about a hundred thousand dollars into it. You still gotta pay realtor fees, you got carrying costs, and also you have to have that meat on the bone, your spread. If you're looking to make a 10% return, 10%, uh, 1.3, that means you need to make a hundred and thirty thousand when the dust settles. So all these things come into a compensating factor. Now, during the our real boom, I bought my first investment property through the bank. Also, I've bought properties through the auctions for investors. I've helped investors rehab the property. I've made a lot of investors money. But the spreads are no longer like how they used to be, especially at the auction. Before these guys, man, we were getting like, you know, 10, 15% returns. But now you're getting like a 6% return, but then it just becomes a full-time job. Now, I stopped that because, you know, I make more money as, as far as selling general real estate. However, I still buy properties that need to be rehabbed, but I never sell my properties. I'm a buy and hold investor and I hold forever. So what that means is, well, let me retract. I don't hold forever. I buy and hold and I sell at a certain time. Now, my strategy is basically to buy the property and really hold it forever, right? That's the goal because I'm making cash flow because I'm all about cash flow. But there are some times where I take a look at my portfolio every year and there's some properties that are only yielding me a 12% when I have other properties that are yielding me infinity percent of returns. And that's what I look to do. I look to scale up and I am always readjusting my portfolio because it's all about getting your money out of the deal, deploying it back into another deal, leveraging out and using the bank's money. Now, I'm not a real estate guru or anything like that. So, you know, you know, I'm just an average guy that got into the real estate game or became a real estate agent because I have a passion for real estate and I knew that by owning investment properties is one of the ways to build financial wealth. And everybody that has real money, what do they have? They have real estate. Now a lot of people are looking at this video and I'm like, man, this home's a piece of shit. You know what, you get this home for the right price, you can slam dunk this deal. Also, the other thing I want you to take a look at is, you know, I talked about the average days in the market in this neighborhood. You also have to take a look at the demographics too as well. That is such an important role. And one thing that I've learned about real estate that has helped me is about, had, had helped me realize that you should learn about like economics, data and trends you know, uh, demographics is very important. If you guys haven't read the book from uh, Harry Dent, uh, you might want to look up Harry Dent. He's an economist, but he specializes in demographics like baby boomers. And, you know, he breaks it down and really explains the age groups of what they do. Like they got it down to a science when he can tell you the average person, right, at a certain age will spend the most money, when they'll save the most money, when they'll buy their brand new car. And the reason why this is important is because the question I have for you is, you need to know how many people, or what's the average household income in Las Vegas? 
Here in Las Vegas, it was only 51,000. Now, if the average household is, income is 51,000, you need to ask yourself, how many people out there can afford a $1.3 million home? So now you can see your funnel and your clientele has dropped. Also with the market conditions too as well, all of this would be a compensating factor. I don't know if this all makes sense or not, or if I'm just rambling on. I'm just kind of blowing through this video kind of fast because again, this is just a, a bank owned property. I mean, it needs a lot of work, but the potential is there. And there's certain things that you can do to this property to make it look custom, but also save a lot on costs as well. Now for the right price, for the right price on this home, you can definitely make some money. All right, let's, let's go to the best part of this home. And the best part I would say is probably the backyard. However, I haven't even gone to the backyard yet. You have a nice cool deck. And I mean, look at this, this thing has some potential. You can't tell me this does not have potential. Now this lot size here, all right. Uh, how big is this lot size here? Come on, Chuck. Uh, the lot size is 23,522 square foot. I mean, this thing has a lot of options and a lot of things that you can do. RV parking, right? I mean, the backyard just needs to be cleaned up, but I can definitely see the potential in this home. Let me know in the comments below if you guys can see the potential in this home, because I sure can. come off to this side here now keep in mind with a bank on property you're buying oh excuse me I'm burping keep in mind these bank on properties you're buying it as is where is condition that's why I would still get a full home inspection on the property too as well okay if you are interested the earnest money deposit on here is twenty five thousand dollars Okay, HOAs for this community or this neighborhood, uh, it's going to be $245. There should be a master plan of 48. Okay, and taxes on something like this is $7,599 a year. Well, that is pretty much it for this video. Let me know in the comments below uh, what you would actually pay for this property. Would you buy a bank to own property? Would you go through the whole rehab? Now, if you like this video content and you've been watching this channel for a while, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, if you like the video or you like the content, give me a like too as well. And for all the uh, haters out there, I love you too. Much shout outs. If you have anything negative to say, please. Go ahead and uh, let me know in the comments below, and uh, I'll try to give you a rebuttal. Other than that, I really do appreciate each and every one of you guys, and uh, have a blessed day, and I'm out.